the idea of the muses is really interesting too i always want to talk about that with artists because everybody's different Mm -hmm. and everybody has like their own inspiration that got them into wanting to do that definitely i guess maybe one thing we could start with because is just talking about like what we do too okay that way like we're familiar with each other too because jenna's told me about you but i'd love to hear from you like what what you do and like what you've created and like what you're proud of i guess definitely yeah no i'd love to talk about it i might ramble a little bit but okay no yeah, dude. feel free to cut me off whenever <laughs> yeah so uh by trade, I'm a videographer. That's what I went to school for. And I like to write science fiction short stories as well. So I like Ooh. to think of myself as a creative writer a little bit. Uh, yeah. That's what got me into the creative world ori- originally because I can't draw to save my life. Uh, I like to call myself a stick figure expert. I'm uh, pretty good at those, yeah. I'm not gonna lie. But uh, no, video and, and writing has always been my strong point. I just love the idea of creating something more uh more so science fiction related because you can kind of take what's going on in reality and then t- push it to the extreme and kind of look at it through a different lens if that reinterpret it yeah yeah definitely so i have to ask you a question because you just had stick figures mm-hmm. in so like when you were in school because this is something i always used to do when i was in school mm-hmm. is i would draw pictures where my st- stick figures would have like wars with each other mm-hmm. And they'd be like shooting like 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 it's funny that you say science fiction too because I, I i was huge into star wars so do I, i'd always have like they'd have lightsabers or they'd have like guns or you know like laser guns or whatever the heck did you do that kind of stuff a little bit i did some yeah. of that and then my stick figures always had um clothing and accessories Ooh. and other uh other like, things around them so yeah. they weren't uh too detailed in themselves as much as you could tell like the items that they had with them and it's like oh okay it's definitely a character i can recognize yeah. this one from this one <laughs> but they're stick dope. figures <laughs> at the end of the day yeah so in sci-fi then like what kind of characters like are really cool to you like are there some that stand out um off the top of my head none that stand out but uh a sci-fi series that i've always loved and i still go back and watch is the original twilight zone okay the black and white episodes yeah, yeah those are like cracked to me <laughs> so i just uh binge on those and kind of see the ideas that they played out and uh just the way they they kind of uh interpreted what was going on at that time mm-hmm and showed it back on TV. So I don't know. I think those are really cool. It's like yeah, the beginning of it kind of. It like makes you ask questions about stuff. Like it makes you question things and that's I I haven't watched as much of like the the older Twilight Zone, but I w- I've always heard like such great things and like it seems that, like especially from creative people, I guess. Do you have you watched those? No, but I think the Tower of Terror kind of gave me everything that I needed to know. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm joking. I'm joking. Oh, oh. It's such a good classic. <laughs> uh, no, I have, I, I've seen bits and pieces. I have not d- dove into the whole thing. I have been on the Tower of Terror, though. Oh, is that, is that Twilight Zone? Uh, or, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a play off of. You know, okay. Um, I know, it, wait, it, and that's in like Disney World. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. sixth grade memories. I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure I've seen it. But it was like when I was like really small, and so I wasn't allowed to go on it. I was just like, "Oh no, yeah. you small? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. There was back a when I was like four <laughs> or like five or something. Yeah. Okay. So I'm sorry we kind of went on a tangent, but Xavier, yeah, tell me more about yourself. Okay. Um. So I started in the creative field uh, just as a science fiction writer. Um. I couldn't find the people who I should put my creative works in front of or other author, authors or writers or people in the field to yeah. connect from, connect with and learn from. and uh, Like a mentor or something. Like a mentor, like a, yeah, like a point of contact into the into the creative world. Just yeah. kind of someone to help me put, put me on the right path of this is what I should be doing, this is how I, I can take my career to the next level if I want to. Mm. And that led me to create a showcase. That's what I've been working on a yeah. lot lately. She was telling us about that. Definitely. Nice. Hell yeah. 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 Well, please do. do, please. So, Showcase is a local personality profile and subscription service. What we do is we connect local artists with local art patrons based on similar uh, values, affinities, or experiences, just so you can um, kind of get to know the artist more than just seeing a painting. You can see the actual person behind it. The end goal of that is to create a location-based app, so whatever city you land into, you can find the local artists, galleries, and events 
connect with them directly by by the artwork from them or just meet up and kind of get to know them. Dang. That's sweet. I, I really like that idea. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. And that's... you just launched, or are you, are you launching here soon? Yeah, in the next month or so. In the yeah. next month okay. or so. I'm just trying to finalize the website, and then I want to get it out there to the people and see if they use it or not. Damn. That is super awesome. Uh, I've been kind of narrowing down places. Uh, so it's between Cali, Cali Commons, uh, the Culture House, okay. and Project Project. I think those three venues would have enough space to hang up the art and then it wouldn't be too big because i don't know what yeah. the crowd's gonna be like but uh it should be fun it yeah you know fun. joel from project project right somewhat yeah definitely. oh hit him up he would be all over that yeah he's a cool guy not putting words in his mouth but he's just <laughs> cool he would he just seems like the guy that would be like hell yeah i'm in definitely and that seems like the cool environment like that's yeah. kind of Raw. the feel i want showcase to have yeah definitely there you go mm-hmm. perfect I haven't Connecting. been. Yeah, I haven't been to Project Project. I haven't actually. I haven't been to any of those venues, but I've seen people uh, take footage from Culture House. Okay. So nice. I've definitely like, seen the vibe there, and it, it looks dope. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So you mentioned earlier that you studied vid- videography, right? Mm-hmm. So how does somebody who studied videography find them find their way into developing? It's like an app, essentially, right? So do it like. Did you do software development or did you just come up with the idea and then put together a team or how did that work? Yeah, so I kind of just came up with the idea and I've been trying to put together a team, but it's been a lot of me just kind of working on my own and yeah. figuring it out as I go, uh, which has been fun. It's it's a fun learning experience. and I get to meet cool people like like you and Jenna, of course, and everyone else in the room. Oh, yeah. Um, Thank you. No problem. We think we're pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> Seems that way so far. <laughs> um I'm sorry, I kind of lost train of thought. No, was, was yeah, yeah. So, oh, yeah. how did I get so onto So you this were path? doing it like yeah. you were just like grinding. Yeah, I was just grinding. Basically, I went to college originally uh, to shoot a commercial that would air during the Super Bowl. Like that was my original. That was dream. your goal. Yeah, that was the oh, dream. Oh shit! So I uh, double majored in marketing and uh, broadcast production, and I hated marketing. Too much math, too mm. much finance, and I was like, oh, let me just go to the J school, and that's where I kind of. Uh, I, I had a double major in advertising, and that's where I learned just like uh, market research and kind of building different campaigns and stuff like that. So that's nice. how I got the business side sort of for, for yeah. showcase. So I'm more so the business side than the uh, technical side. Can't code to save my life. Yeah. Yeah. I can drag and drop stuff on Wix. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. Like, I'm not analytical um, at all. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I'm so creative in it. It bites me in the ass a lot, but <laughs> but I need to find somebody that's analytical. I think that's kind of the key is like you got to find the people that can do the things that, that you can't do or, mm-hmm. you know, that you're not, you don't have the time to like put, you know, effort in that or whatever. Oh, so, definitely. Yeah. I think uh, one thing that I can add to that is it's important to try, which I'm sure you you did. You, you went through that and you tried. Now you have a respect mm-hmm. for those mm-hmm. who do. Yeah. I lacked respect in a lot of fields before I became an artist and needed other people's perspectives. And I think trying everything once is so important. I have mad respect for glass blowers now because yeah. I suck at it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, yeah. It's and same with pottery, same with videography now that I I am partners with one and it's just, it's a whole new field when you do put your hands into it, actually. Then yeah. you can contract it out and be like, I don't have time. You True. can do it. Here's that, money. <laughs> that is a really But I respect point. you. Yeah, like, <laughs> pottery and, and is a headache. Just having that perspective. I mean, just, I think perspective is valuable in itself, you know. Anytime you get to see something from a different person's shoes and try to, like, figure, it, it helps you figure things out you know yep and it helps helps i think so many times it just helps you understand people's motives um too you're like oh now i understand why this person's trying to get out of here like before x like an example so i've been djing weddings um i guess if you don't mind i'll talk about a little bit yeah let's find out about you what do you do who do you dj weddings for so um i dj weddings for complete weddings and events right now nice. i used to a videographer yeah i did videos from them yeah oh my god that's so funny it's small world yeah. yeah did you do it here in omaha yeah over at um uh, uh millworks is that what it's called the building over millworks. there Mastercraft. I, I mean prob- mastercraft there you probably go. yeah, yeah. Mastercraft. okay and uh 
I yeah. So I do it for the Lincoln branch. Oh nice. I got yeah because I got in with them right after I quit my last job, which I lived in Lincoln, and uh, then I moved back to Omaha. <laughs> so I've been commuting. But um, the one thing I did want to say really quick, just before the the thought disappears, is um, that yeah, when I'm at a wedding. And there's a photographer and they've, you know, they've been there the whole day or whatever. And they've been taking pictures and, you know, we'll get done with all the major stuff like the dedication dances and stuff like that. And the dollar dance is the one big thing that it's like at the end of the night, you probably know this is nobody, nobody cares about the dollar dance. Nobody wants pictures from the dollar dance. Nobody wants video like footage from it. Like, all right, you know, maybe footage, but at that point in the night, you probably have so much footage that you're like, nah, I'm, I don't even need it. And, uh, and so, so many times, like, photographers are like, please don't do dollar dance until after I'm gone. <laughs> because I'm just going to take pictures that I'm not going to use. And they're not going to buy them. And, I, and I'm always just like, okay, cool. And so, like, I always try to delay it until, like, later in the night. Which can be good and can be bad, right. you know. But usually, it gives the couple a break anyway, so they're they're usually pretty happy about it. So yes, and just so <laughs> I'm I'm clear, it's exhausting because you have to take so, so many photos. photos. And not only that, but then those photographers, be, you know, we know photographers. They have, we know photographers. <laughs> they have to go through all the photos, and if they're going through photos that they know the people are straight up not even gonna buy. What's the point? What is the point? Yeah. So what's the point of even taking them? And uh, yeah. So that any. Makes sense, but like looking at it as a person who's like getting married, uh -huh. then it's just like, well, like you're kind of, you know, most sure. people are gone by then. Like you could have gotten more dollars if that. Exactly. Was I don't want to do the you're right. Else, but like, if That's a true, person who does want to, like, yeah. But it kind of sucks, but. Exactly. I think here here's my potential solve for this, and then I'll talk about myself a little bit. <laughs> um, is that you you uh, you just eliminate a bunch of stuff. You're just like, okay, we're just not going to do a lot of the traditional stuff. Like one thing I think is kind of silly is the introduction when people do a grand entrance where everybody comes in and they like say everybody's names. I think it's kind of silly because it's such a short thing and it's it has not really no payoff. Like everybody's just like, oh yeah. I don't, I don't know. It can be exciting, but when I just I think it's a bit much. Like others, oh yeah. 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 That's true. It's true. <clears throat> so, but then when it comes to like just like doing a painting or something like that, like you get more of like that, like you just get like a larger rope. You know what I mean? Like a you know, more like freedom. Work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's man, we could talk forever about that topic <laughs> mm -hmm. for real because that is there is a balance, and I think you know in music. Uh, so, yes, I'm a DJ but I also produce and um, I'm a, a vocalist and um, I, a songwriter as well. So I kind of try to do it all when it comes to the music side of things. You know, like I, I'm, this is my computer for recording audio. Um, I've stu I studied at Metro uh, for that. So, um, and it's great. I've, I freaking love audio. I think there's just so many things about it that I are interesting to me. And I think I will pretty much just always find something new about it. So, so going off of that, yeah. you both went to school and Jenna didn't go the traditional route. Can we talk to Jenna a little bit? Like, Ooh, yeah, what yeah. Like to, like, you know, what do you feel like you missed out on and what you need on you know, the path you took? And if you want to introduce yourself and talk about what you do as well, that'd sure. be a perfect foray. Um, again, my name is Jenna Johnson. I am an acrylic painter i'm s certainly exploring other routes trying to get more installation base yeah. i want to go big i want to multimedia go, yeah multimedia i want i want the people who are viewing my work to be like surrounded by it and in it hence the yellow room we did the yeah. collaboration last literally two it, months you're ago. inside of the art we built a room we painted it yellow kale made seven beautiful clips songs and yeah people got to walk in there yeah yeah we heard some good comments on that too i thought that was i thought that was a good cool 
exploration. So that's kind of where my work is leaning is, is figuring out how to really engage my viewers. Mm-hmm. And I'm kind of done with the three foot rule. Stand in front of a painting, three foot away, look at it and walk. Mm. Walk to your left or right, you know. It's so it's it's so overdone, and I, I really want to push my boundaries when it comes to that. So, yeah. I mean, I want to hang stuff off the ceiling. I want to do installation pieces. Um, so that's about a little bit about me. But I'm currently assisting an artist in town. His name is Thurman Statham. Mm-hmm. He's a glass artist, and we've been working with metal. That's a whole different field, but it's an opening me up to want to do other things. So, um, awesome. where was that leading to my education? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Which was I learned I learned I could paint in high school. Wanted to go to college for it, but decided that it was a smarter idea to step back and try to do it on my own. Therefore, I got the studio at Hot Shops when I was 18 and have been painting and doing commissions ever since. So school is still in, in, you know, it's still still in my vision if I do need it or I want it. Just know it's not going to be for art because I don't want to go educate in art. I want to educate my own way. Um, And I don't need a $200,000 art degree to go do that. So I'm learning under some of the top wolves right now in the art world thurman yeah like he's he's a wolf he's a straight up wolf and he's like very successful with i mean yeah like he everybody obviously is gonna have roller coaster ride but his roller coaster ride is insane (laughs) his is like the mamba you know where ours is like i don't know what's another one at worlds of fun that caterpillar yeah (laughs) little kid ride at the at the uh county fair (laughs) So, oh gosh, that's well, a whole new thing. So I feel like we've probably talked about this, and and you just kind of mentioned it, so it made me, it brought it up in my mind. Is just that like when I was in art classes, um, you know, through middle school and high school and whatever, I could never stick to assignments. Mm-hmm. Like they would give me one assignment, I'd be like, oh my god, that's really cool. Like I w- I want to make this awesome, and I would spend the whole quarter working on one project where they're going through like nine or 10 or 11 projects sure. and, and and like I don't know if maybe that you feel that same way where like you fi- you kind of mentioned you're like yeah I just kind of taught myself mm. like you knew it, it was just kind of in you and you just needed to get it out and in in doing that like you probably found different ways to paint different like techniques and stuff like that just because you were interested in it right i would assume those high school assignments were a godsend because it it woke up this hunger in me i was Mm. it was like i needed to get it done not to get the grade to see it done because i wanted to see what i could do and so Whereas you were maybe I'm a little more meticulous, which I had people around me that way too. I've always just known that I'm a fast painter and I'm a fast worker Ooh, and I want to get it done and move and, and build from it. Yeah. Um, and not spend all my time on a couple of things. You so, don't get stuck on things yeah, as and much. It's my personality. It's like, if I'm stuck, throw it, let's go. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. Let's go to the next. Yeah. Um, but I, that's me. Everybody's so different. So those, those assignments, I got them done and I'm like, I want to keep going. That's yeah. what woke me up to say, oh my God, you're an artist. You got to go get a studio. Yeah. And keep doing this and see what it leads to. Mm-hmm. That It's funny that you say that too, because like that Bob Marley painting that you gave me, mm-hmm. like you were like, oh yeah, we're just going to throw these out. And I was just like, what? This painting is <laughs> great. Like, <laughs> are you serious? But like that kind of speaks to your process is that like, Sometimes you you just look at something and maybe at one time it was great for you, but you've moved so far past it now that now you're looking back and you're like, meh, whatever. You, you only know? have so much parking space up here. Yeah. Don't <laughs> crowd it with stuff that's not pushing you and inspiring you. Hell yeah. Definitely. And every not everything I make is great. Mm-hmm. It's a process. It's I mean, true. hell, my boss, when he started working, he st- threw, he would throw a show build these ins- massive installations, take them to the dump the next day, and sell paintings out of the dumpster. What? 
I don't know, like. <laughs> See, and I yeah. would say that was crazy for him. Yeah. But then, I'm, then, then it I would was be a, a hip, I would be a hypocrite to think that. So I'm like, everybody has their process, and you have to just. You gotta respect, respect the process. It and watch yeah. it. Yeah. And I'm still learning my process. Right. I wasn't. I. It, it comes with steps. It comes with being a little more comfortable to fail, a little more comfortable to try these things, a little more comfortable to work out of your zone. Mm -hmm. and Try new things. Mm -hmm. yep. It's so important. But that's what's building you as an artist. Yeah. That's like, I think we're, we're probably pretty similar in that respect where people will come to us and be like, what kind of artist are you? And you're like, that's a really great question. I don't know. Like people will ask me, they'll be like, what kind of genre of music do you primarily make? And I'll say like five or six different genres because I'm like, well, right now they should just say I'm today doing these, but I've done a lot of this and like, you know, so it's constantly evolving. Well, that question may need to be, what are you doing today yeah. as an artist? Because yeah. I don't know what I'm going to do next month. It's true. Mm, I don't think any of us really do. We think we have an idea, but... Yeah. yeah, we try to. We try to pretend like we have an idea, definitely. Yeah. No, and I just want to touch on some yeah. things you said. Hell yeah. Um, yeah, no, definitely. Um, if you know what you want to do early on in life, then I'd say definitely go for it. That's a big step in it. And mm. school is not for everybody. Mm -hmm. Towards the end of my uh, time at college, I felt like I probably should have dropped out or just should have left and gone after what I wanted to do. But at that point, I kind of knew what I wanted to do in life. And I think college was important for helping me try different things and kind of figure out what worked for me and what didn't work for me. But again, by my senior year, I was like, oh, uh, I feel like I didn't need college necessarily yeah. to, to do what I want to do in life. And like you said, uh, you're out here working with the wolves now, the big dogs, and that's just from trial and error. And I think a big part of that is not being afraid to, to fail or to mess up because that's going to happen regardless. Nobody has a... A perfect ride or, or that perfect mm -hmm. trajectory take off like everything goes smooth no um, something's gonna go wrong you just yeah. have to roll with the punches and it's it, it's gonna be stressful in that moment when the things are going wrong but you will learn from it and in the next time you're gonna you're gonna dodge it or you're, you'll have a plan for it definitely hell yeah definitely yeah. do you learn guys feel life. like in your Adapt. fields you have somebody to and ha uh, kind of like be a, a guiding mentor? star. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, oh, yeah mentor. Definitely. It's so important, right? Yeah, everyone needs a mentor. Yeah. Do you guys have one specific? So you don't have to say the name, but yeah, I mean, I definitely have a few that, you know, I kind of, it's, it's funny because I think sometimes mentors don't want to give themselves away right away. Mm -hmm. Like they, they, uh, you know, I think it's a lot of responsibility to be somebody's mentor and like know that you have this connection. And so I have definitely people in my life that I'll reach out to and I'll talk to and they'll just drop things for me every once in a while. They'll just be like, hey, you should check out this. Hey, you should check out this. And like that, I don't think that's direct mentorship. I think, you know, that's definitely more like what you're doing where you're actually meeting with Thurman and you're actually seeing what he's doing and stuff like that. But I do think that's kind of like a start to it sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's just like a hey, every once in a while I'm going to touch base, just kind of see how you're doing. Mm -hmm. Or I'm going to listen to your track and like tell you a little bit about of it. Oh, so that's I'll, throw my, I'll throw your name to this guy if you yeah. need. It's so important. It's well, important. and that's the thing, and especially with music, what I found is really it's huge to just send stuff to people. Yeah. Send stuff to people, let them listen to it, because if they do like it and they think of somebody and they can connect with that person, they can send that off to somebody and like that you could have a connection with somebody that's pretty big so yeah and I, i'm sure that's true in all art but like definitely with music it's so simple because i just send a link you know like mm -hmm. that's easy and it's free it doesn't cost anything sorry what do you think about the people who are like because there's sometimes people who are going to send you their work and this and that and like sometimes nowadays we have the mentality that they're just trying to get a like you know they're mm. just trying to like Expose yeah, themselves because people are sharing their stuff. Everywhere. So it looks fake. People so think it's fake. You guys want to talk about that a little bit? Oh my yes. God! Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm Let's all over it. that one. So really quick, I do want to say um, about school because uh, I went to Midland and I spent four years there. I ended up getting a degree in public relations, which I think has been useful. But I will say, like. A lot of my college experience was completely motivated by a relationship. And so 
I didn't, I wasn't pursuing what I really loved and what I really wanted to do. And so I will say like, definitely towards the whole artistic thing, I was on a completely different path at that point. Like I wasn't, it wasn't even in my brain at that point. I had basically given up on art. And so now like getting out of that and then going to things like Metro, I constantly i'm like man if i just skipped college if i just not done that at all and like just gone to metro just started studying like engineering right away mm -hmm. i'd be so much further along than i am right now yeah. and like you know obviously hindsight is 2020 but like mm -hmm. i definitely think there's a huge point to the, like just jumping in and just knowing that like i have something in me i just need to follow it um, and yeah, like if you had, like you, you were saying Xavier is if you just have a passion for something and you know, like what you want to do early on, why not like try to go for it? Mm -hmm. Because if it doesn't work out, you've got the rest of your life ahead of you. Yeah. You can always School go will back. always be there. Definitely. Yeah, exactly. So, okay. But to talk about what you're talking about, um, mm -hmm. I think that's something I've been encountering a lot recently, um, actually is that I... I have been pretty question. active in the social f sphere. Okay, so it's, do you, like, engagement is important. It's good to, like, hop oh, on people's social. posts and, okay. and, yeah, socials and stuff yep. like that. Mm -hmm. But, Sorry. and I'm trying to remember where it came from, but, um, where this question came from. But, uh, it's just, do you think that some people perceive that as fake if you're doing it too much? Mm -hmm. Um, or, you know, whatever. You know, is it, do you think people, don't see it as genuine, I guess, is probably the best way to question that. There's fine lines. The yeah. social media thing is such a blessing and a curse. Right. You can connect, but it's 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 putting you in this field. Mm -hmm. I'm I, I get very timid when I when I go and try to push something or pay for you on know, on sponsorship uh, or whatever. Yes, yeah. yes, because it's like at, at what point is it gonna hurt me and is it gonna help me? Mm -hmm. Okay, we all know how it could hurt you. Yeah. You seem fake or you mm -hmm. seem you know, not you're just, genuine. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're just okay. looking for attention. Or something. If just every yeah. time somebody posts something, you're just like, this is awesome. It could this connect awesome. you. Fire, fire emoji. Right, it could fire. Oh my gosh, yeah. if I see one I, more of those. I do that. I do that. Oops. I do that on bigger, bigger people though. Because I know they, they're not going to look at it. Yeah, right? So I'm just like, well, care. at least somebody will maybe see my name. <laughs> yeah, why not? But it could also connect you with that one person that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it's a double-edged sword, to be honest. I definitely think so. I think people do get suspicious of people who are like... I mean, it's almost like the idea of cloud chasing or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, that people are trying to get attention. And, and I think that's absolutely correct. I think there are a lot of people that are trying to promote themselves. Um, there's a I, difference between right and wrong attention. There's definitely, yeah. and like there's right and wrong ways to do it. And I think, you know, like personally, um, I just, I get excited about things. Like, so I'll see something. I think I was, I think we were talking about how I get like obsessive a little bit sometimes about, about certain things. And so if it's something that I really fuck with hard, I will like go all in and I'll like really care about it. And I think some, sometimes too much. I do it in my, my relationships too, mm -hmm. where I just dump in too much. And so I think, you know, that can probably be pretty off putting to people. But, um, but yeah, like I, anytime I comment on something, I mean it from the heart. Like mm -hmm. that's, I always try to make it something that it's just, if, if I feel something when I'm watching it, I'm going to tell you about it. Like, Definitely. I want you to know about that. Yeah. What's up? So I think like too, what we're talking about, I think Xavier's like app is very like what you want out of art and social media, mm. to be honest. Like you want yes. to connect, you want to learn and you want to also be exposed, but in a genuine way. And I think that's kind of like what you're trying to get. So props to you. But um, yeah. we, you want to talk about what motivated you to create that a little bit? Definitely. Yeah, so the motivation behind Showcase was, uh, again, back to when I was a creative writer and I couldn't find the right people to talk to or to, to make the connections. Is it still working? Yeah, just get closer. Hello. Closer. Hello. Yeah, you're good. You're good. Okay. So, um, yeah, I wanted to make connections. That was the main goal behind the app was to connect artists with other artists, uh, emerging artists with established artists so they can kind of learn from one another and have that, that uh, intergenerational like, relationship kind of. I think of it as like time time traveling, because uh, <laughs> yeah. sci-fi nerd. But um, <laughs> <laughs> hell yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. You got to make fun out of life. Um, 
and the other mo motivation behind that was uh, the current social media platforms. Like they're more focused on you just want to go there and kind of see your friends and family. And if mm -hmm. you post your artwork, fire emoji. That's cool, bro. Yeah. I'll share it or whatever. Right. And showcase is more of a place for you to go and see art that you want to purchase or to connect with that artist. So it kind of nice. cuts out the clutter. Like your friends and family can still be there, but that's not what it's for. The main focus is. Yeah seeing art, art connecting with art and artists either if you're creative yourself or if you're outside of the creative world you just kind of yeah. want to get into it and see who's in your city who's doing what kind of i really yeah. like the word you use clutter that's what it is it is yeah, it's parking definitely. space yeah up in your brain mm, that's yeah. funny. it's true you have to and you have to weigh in how much how much you want to use how much you want to use yeah. after 10 dog pics you see one art pic and you're like oh i've kind of had enough for today yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's too yeah. complicated for me right now yeah definitely. that's so there's two things well one the time travel <laughs> yeah man like when i'm in an art museum and, and that's that's what i find so appealing about art museums is you stand there and you're staring at something and you're like this was painted a thousand years ago, you know whatever like uh, 500 years ago whatever it's an old ass painting <laughs> and it's just so moving like yeah, you know to be in that position and, yeah. and still in perfect condition however many years later yeah like that it's insane and in an art museum you get fatigued after a while so like what you're saying when you're scrolling through instagram like right when some art i mean is so the artist is pouring so much of themselves into it mm -hmm. and they're making it very complex and complicated. And if you sit there and study it for a while, you, you might not totally understand it, but you're kind of getting a little bit of that because you're like, this is more than just a painting. Like there's something more to this, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And so when you're scrolling through Instagram, looking at all these dumb pictures, yeah, you get or the sensory overload videos, and you're just like, yeah. And half of them now are just so sponsored much. posts. That's true too. You know, anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, and then you get to the one painting, and you're like, eh, <laughs> whatever. I I'm too tired, dude. My brain. Yeah. Oh, definitely. That is that is how it is, and that's kind of the goal behind Showcase. Uh, I want to download this like right now. Yeah. <laughs> we want to make it available to the people. I see yeah. it being really big in international markets, so like uh, yeah. developing countries or third world where there's poverty, where a lot of people probably don't have money or the access to an art gallery, but more than likely they have a cell phone yeah and you never know maybe somebody in omaha wants some art from peru and then somebody in peru wants some nebraskan art who knows mm -hmm. so how do you connect these people how are you like contacting them how are you right now uh organizing? a lot of a lot of groundwork just a lot of foot to the pavement I've, wow. i kind of slide in the dms yeah. as they say uh, yeah a lot a lot uh i'll message artists cool. on websites i try to have like three points of contact just to kind of annoy them so it's like i know you saw the message you yeah can't miss you can't oh miss God. three three messages from like an email facebook mm -hmm. and then your website uh so they see i'm persistent and then when when they don't reply i kind of just like show up at their art show like, <laughs> surprise oh, they're like oh you're a real person I'm like, yeah Isn't that crazy? but uh no you got to be persistent That's you got to know what you want and you yeah. got to be genuine with people like uh Hell yeah i try to be as transparent as i can so they they see like i'm not you're not trying to pull the wool over their eyes. Exactly. You're I don't trying to give them, them an opportunity. Mm -hmm. I just want to connect everybody. Dude, that's that's awesome. That's some. Those are some business chops right there. Like <laughs> that's some serious. Like that's some shit I need to like <laughs> learn from right there. Because that's like there are a lot of local music artists, right? Mm -hmm. And some of them are harder to work with others or than others and, for whatever reason. Yeah. And you know, I understand everybody's busy and stuff like that, but. I think, yeah, if you have a go-getting mentality and you're like, hey, like, I'm serious about this. Mm -hmm. This isn't just, and genuine. Yeah, I think definitely. the genuineness is huge. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something I'm I'm always drawn to is just people, and it probably makes sense that we're, the three of us are sitting here because I know Jen, Jen is a very genuine person. And so obviously like her connection with you, I think she probably thinks you're a very genuine person. We just like, yeah, we we like to hang around people like that. And that's you just so, to. it's so important. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's it's how we know that we can trust people, I think. 